Hi, Barbie. When I first saw this movie, I loved it. I thought it was a fun romp that had a tongue-in-cheek jab at Naughty's feminism, and I liked that. It was kind of stupid, but like still enjoyable. I didn't want to engage with its politics because to me, thinking that women should be like socially, financially, emotionally, et cetera, et cetera, equal to everybody else in the world, or, you know, live in equity with everybody else in the world is not a political statement. <laughs> it's just a fact. And facts don't care about your feelings. So I'm just gonna start this video by going off with my original like opening paragraph to this video where I was like, the Barbie movie isn't that deep. Don't worry about it. If you're upset about all that shit, you're an idiot. So I'm gonna go off with that first. And then I'm gonna actually delve into what this video was really about. Let's go. So the whole point of this film was that it was a satire of Naughty's feminism. It's purposefully showing the fight against 2000s patriarchy because Barbie herself is a product of a bygone era. And now I, you know, thinking back on it, Greta Gerwig is just obsessed with like 2002, like girl, move on. The ending shows that she has to mature and grow out of Barbie land and being a doll to embrace the new world of feminism in which she is a real woman, she is taken seriously, and she can continue her work of uplifting other women. It honestly baffles me that people can take this movie and its politics seriously, considering it is so literally fake and comical. It really isn't that deep. Conservatives just love to be triggered by anything that shows women in a positive light. The only villain in this movie is societal expectations because it even shows the execs of Mattel as ultimately good guys who want the best for Barbie. Uh, just like the main Ken and the rest of the Kens. The movie is about uplifting women in a tongue-in-cheek way that invokes nostalgia of the uh, Y2K era. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> I mean, I believe that any cis man who approaches this movie as though it is like the worst piece of shit ever because it pushes a feminist propaganda narrative needs to take the binky out of their mouth before they shit their diaper. But I wanna take this video in a different direction, a transcendent direction. Ah, uh, you see where I'm going with this? I posted a comment on Bryony Claire's video about a week ago that I wanna share. Her video was entitled, uh, why are we scared of the feminist label? Confessions of a former pick me. And in it, I think she like expressly asks people for their experiences, either identifying as a feminist or an anti-feminist and like if it's changed. So I said something to that effect. Um, I only watched 10 minutes of this video for reasons I include in the comment or for reasons you can kind of gather from the comment. So let's go. Uh, I said, I used to identify as a feminist from as young as 14 years old, but I can't bring myself to anymore because TERFs have ruined it. It makes me so sad, but I just can't align myself with an ideology that's been co-opted by people enabling the genocide of me and everyone I know. I rarely see cis feminists caring about trans people and particularly trans women, and I'd rather not even try appealing to them, but I know feminism is about more than just individual people, and I don't judge anyone else for identifying with that movement, particularly women of color. And as you'll see in this uh, in this video, I've kind of gone against that last statement. Um, that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about being a non-binary trans lesbian and my relationship to feminism and feminists. Okay, so like I said in the comment, I used to identify as a feminist. As a teenager, me and my weird girlfriends would run around spouting things about <laughs> that we didn't even understand about how women aren't sex objects and men can't treat us like that. And it's like girl, you are literally 14 years old. Um, uh, my entire life I knew I was weird and I didn't fit in with other people and now I understand it's because I have autism and I'm non-binary and I'm a lesbian and all that kind of stuff. I also have unending amounts of trauma that I don't have the money to unpack with a therapist, so I just make stupid little YouTube videos. Hi, I'm Orbini. This is Orbini TV. Feel free to grab a bevy while I rehash my cringe compilation of fail girl moments. I was an ugly duckling from the very beginning and it wasn't until I was in high school that I actually found people who cared about the same things as me, like including feminism. I don't know where I got it from because my mother has never verbally said that she identifies as a lesbian. She doesn't care about gay rights and she would rather disown her own children than ever except she did anything wrong. And my father is just like an out and out misogynist. Like he's just an absolute piece of shit and he's a total womanizer and he ruins women's lives and he doesn't care about any of it. So I don't know where I got the idea of being a feminist from. 
I was just always kind of contrarian. And I feel like this video is also kind of contrarian. But here I was at 14 years old telling everyone I was a feminist while also craving attention from boys, while also being disgusted by them because I was a lesbian and also uh, being in love with my best friend. So it was a confusing time. But that's what the Barbie movie reminds me of. This era, this peak noughties feminist era. Barbie is the most milk toast, stale, like, barely there, barely a drop of feminist propaganda because all it says is that women's lives are hard when men don't care about them. And the men who decry feminist propaganda and want to cut off Margot Robbie's head now that she's not just uh, standing against a blank wall doing nothing, they're just sad little piss babies who prove Greta Gerwig's point. They don't care about women and they make the lives of every woman they come across even harder. We have video evidence of Steven Crowder abusing the shit out of his pregnant wife. Ben Shapiro, where do I start? Rush Limbaugh, I remember this. I don't know why I remember this, but Rush Limbaugh, like, thought that, um, was that Rush Limbaugh? I'm pretty sure it was. Like one of those shock jocks from like 10 years ago, like who cares? Um, he thought that you had to take the birth control pill every time you had sex. So taking it more than once at a time meant you were a slut. These guys are almost the fucking worst, but you know what's worse than that? Transphobic garbage that says you're not a real woman unless you have perky tits, a vagina and no cellulite. Literally to become a real woman, Barbie had to have all of these things. The movie ends with her seeing a gynecologist because now she suddenly has a pussy. Yeah, it was a funny joke at the time when I watched the film, but now I'm like, is that what you really think? So is that what you really think? What about people who have pussies who aren't women? What about women who don't have pussies? It seems like the hardest concept in the world for cis people to grasp that we might have different experiences of gender. Conservatives quote the Bible, they quote inaccurate and provably false science. They berate trans women and they even go so far as to make the lives of cis women worse by hating trans women. If a woman with short hair is in line at the bathroom at an event where there is more than one cis feminist, you bet your sweet bitty that that short haired gal is going to get harassed and sexually assaulted because you can never be a woman if you have short hair. Didn't you read the feminist manifesto? On a personal note, um, existing as a non-binary femme in this world uh, is kind of fucked. Like I'm never gonna play oppression Olympics because I don't believe in it. But I will say that while people assuming I'm a cis woman doesn't have the implications for further violence that say misgendering a trans woman does, it's still violence. It's still misgendering. I am not a woman. I don't want to be a woman. I don't care about passing. When people look at me, I want them to see a lesbian, not a woman. I mean, obviously lesbians can be women and women can be lesbians. But for me, that's not the story. I'm a non-binary trans femme lesbian. I am a person. That's what I want people to see. And having this, this very strict view of saying like, oh, well, I look like this, so therefore I look like a woman. I have a complicated relationship with femininity, femaleness, whatever, but I never wanna be a woman. That's just not who I am. Any more than a trans man wants to be a woman. As much as I revere trans women and trans men and trans people in general, I don't wanna be seen as a woman because I'm not a woman. This is tricky because I never wanna downplay the violence that trans women and trans men go through on a near daily basis when they are misgendered or when they don't pass as misgendered. I mean, the thing for me is that I, will never pass to cis people because cis people don't recognize that I am not a cis person, right? Um, I might see another lesbian and they might clock me as a lesbian and that's passing for me. Uh, I might see another non-binary person and they might clock me as non-binary and that's passing to me. It's not like I don't wanna be seen as a cis woman and I don't wanna berate anybody else whose goal it is to pass. I just think in general, my perception of passing is that it's a game that no one wins. It's not, it's not ever gonna make anyone's life better. It's just not. The only thing that is going to work is by breaking down the structures in place that enable violence against trans women who don't pass, you know, or against trans women when they don't pass. Because as soon as you're found out as being trans, you stop being able to pass. 
And I never want to contribute to the violence against trans people. But I do want to say that non-binary people, we face our own instances of violence and, um, you know, intricacies of of the gender system when we are non-binary in a system that, that only recognizes binaries. I'm never going to say that binary people are making it worse for me because that's just not true. I think uplifting other trans people is is what's going to get us through the genocide that is currently happening to us right now. Being non-binary means that I know that everybody has their own personal relationship with gender and that's just wonderful. That's that's extraordinary. Why wouldn't that be wonderful if everyone has their own personal relationship with things like food and TV shows and the internet? You know, why wouldn't it be wonderful that everyone has their own personal relationship with gender? I think that's incredible. So now thinking about the Barbie movie's relationship to transness is kind of making me a little upset that uh, Greta Gerwig doesn't care about my feelings. I'm sorry, I just am never going to get over that. <laughs> I know, I know it's so stupid, but I just can't, can't get over that phrase. What facts? What facts are you quoting, Ben? Back to Barbie. Why even put a trans Barbie in the movie in the first place if you're not actually going to, like, <laughs> delve into or even acknowledge the struggles that trans people go through? I'm shaking the camera. And if you're going to just turn around and say shit like you can't have cellulite if you want to be beautiful or perfect or featuring a disabled Barbie for all of three seconds or having women gather around to support each other without even acknowledging the struggles that individual women go through and the intersectional struggles that individual women go through like gloria is latin she has struggles that that margot robbie's barbie even if she was a real woman does not have she faces oppression that margot robbie's barbie is a real woman is just never going to face what is the point in saying that the only people who have real problems are cis rich attractive women american women and saying that even the cis rich attractive american men their problems are silly what is the point of saying that <laughs> imagine what would happen if Barbie went to, uh, if Barbie said at the end of that movie, I'm here to see the urologist about my penis? I think the internet would probably be unusable for years. <laughs> I think we'd all have to go offline and touch grass literally. <laughs> but it's funny, right? Because Barbie doesn't have a penis. Barbie doesn't have anything. She is not a person. She is a character. She is a tool to tell a story about themes and messages. And the messages in this are fucking garbage. The themes and the messages that Greta Gerwig likes to promote are fucking bullshit. I mean, like, before I saw this movie, I was like, I'm not going to like it because I hate Greta Gerwig's films. Like, Frances Ha is, like, one of the most boring pieces of shit I've ever seen. Ladybird? Can we move on from the noughties? Can we collectively and individually move on? The Y2K era coming back, not, not a fan. Not a fan of that. Um, I lived through that shit. I lived through 15 years of Supernatural saying, oh, you can be gay, but not really. And you can, you can kind of be a little bit trans, but also not really, because we won't actually say the word lesbian or the word gay on the, <laughs> on the show, unless it's like specifically stating that the characters are not gay. Like I lived through that shit. I <laughs> lived through the noughties of like shit, like there's something about Miriam. Like, oh my God, a fucking Ace Ventura. Like, um, watch Lily Simpson's videos, okay? Watch Lily Simpson's videos. But Barbie was so much fun. It had potential, it had momentum. It was close to saying something real. But that's my problem with cis feminists is that they don't quite get there because they refuse to acknowledge that that even, you know, trans people exist. Like in this movie, yes, we have one trans Barbie, right? And she's probably not even like, how can she even be trans in the movie if Barbies don't have genitals? So she's not trans in the movie. She's not trans Barbie. I'm going to call her trans Barbie, sorry. But um, like the actor is trans. But Barbie literally cannot be trans because she doesn't have sexual reproductive organs. She's a doll. 
They simply don't fucking care about trans people. They don't care about trans women. They don't acknowledge that non-binary people exist. And as for trans men, they're never going to admit that men exist in different spheres of oppression under the patriarchy. <laughs> it's actually corporatism according to Mises, but far be it for me to inflict my personal economic beliefs on other people. They just don't give a shit. There is a long-standing history of feminists attacking, oppressing, abusing, sexually harassing lesbians, particularly butch lesbians and lesbians of color. But now it's just moved on to trans people and particularly trans women, particularly trans women of color. Greta Gerwig's refusal to even approach these kinds of things in a movie that is all about uplifting women is just proof that feminists don't care. They just don't fucking give a shit. I'm sorry that I'm shaking this camera so much. It's just because it's on my desk and I'm also on my desk. It just shows how little people like that think that our lives are worth. I actually hated Trans Barbie's role in this. Um, so her role was to pretend to throw up and make the cis woman uncomfortable. Florals in spring. Fucking groundbreaking. I just have to talk about my reaction to Gloria's speech. <laughs> Sucks to be you, literally didn't identify with a single word of it. And the fact that Greta Gerwig thought this was groundbreaking in 2023. Really? Really? Okay, lastly, I'm just gonna end this by saying that I don't care what cis women go through. Okay. I only care so much as it affects trans people. I only have so much caring in my body and 90% of it was lost when um, we went through a fucking flood that left us homeless last year that I cried about for two hours the other night because I thought I was over it, but I just had not even, even started processing it, you know, um, even though it happened a year and a half ago, everyone has their trauma. Everyone has their own experiences and no, we can't possibly put every experience into one work because then we'd have glee. But focusing on the same experiences of the same people over and over again, like we see it with the Oscars all the time. Oscars so white. Has much changed? Not for me to say. Yeah, and focusing so much energy on just portraying the same stories and the same experiences over and over again is literally killing trans people. Relegating us to caricatures in a movie about cis attractive white women is not doing anything for us, it's, it's killing us. It's working against us. Like refusing to acknowledge the pain that trans people go through, through our individual experiences and through our oppressions under corporatism, it, it's literally killing us. What we know is what people experience and what they relay of their experiences, which is why it's much more important to listen to actual trans people talk about our experiences like you're doing right now watching this video. So thank you very much for watching it until it, there is a space for us in feminism, I don't give a shit. I wanna see the mannish dykes. I wanna see the sissy t-boys. I wanna see the girl boyfriends and the ugly trannies and the bisexual t-girl furries. Like, let's make a movie about all of that until there is like a movie that just has a completely full trans cast and crew. I'm not gonna be happy. I'm not going to be happy until that happens and until the feminists actually decide to give a shit. I'm done with them. Go fuck yourselves. Bye, Barbie. <laughs>